Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents The City of the Dead, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. Nine o'clock on the morning of the third day in the City of the Dead. The most harrowing night in the lives of Phyllis Carroll and Jimmy Parker is past. During this night of terror, the following incidents have taken place. Captain Friday has disappeared. Jimmy Parker is convinced that it was Mayor Friday whom he and the captain saw digging in Ernie Morton's grave just before Captain Friday disappeared. One of the black pearls belonging to the collection of Theodore Beverly, Phyllis's grandfather, was found under her pillow. It was placed in the mayor's care, and within half an hour was taken from him by some mysterious person. Then, in conclusion, the inmates of the mayor's cottage, including Jimmy, Phyllis, old Dr. Tuner, and the mayor, watching the dawn break from one of the windows, saw old Clawfoot captured and carried off by someone unrecognizable in the dim light. But the night is behind them. The warm morning sun has become a tonic to the shattered nerves of the group and has done much to dispel the terror of the night hours. Phyllis alone is still abed with her wounded shoulder. Jimmy. Well, hello there, sleepyhead. Good morning. Jimmy. Lie down, Phyllis. You hurt your shoulder. Oh, I... See? Oh. I told you. Now you lie still. I forgot. Jimmy, is everything all right? Right as rain. But old Clawfoot was kidnapped. All the better. We don't have to worry about him anymore. I just remember you saying that. And then I guess I went back to sleep. What happened after that? Not a thing. Dr. Tuner and Mayor Friday went out, but they couldn't find a trace of anything. Clawfoot and whoever captured him had vanished. How long have I been asleep, Jimmy? Four hours. It's just past nine now. I feel an awful lot better now. Hungry? Mm-hmm. Ah, <laughs> oh, gee, Phil, it's good to hear you laugh mm-hmm. again. It seems ages since we've had anything to laugh at. Well, things are going to be all right now, aren't they, Jimmy? I don't know, Phil. I hope so. What? What's the matter? Has something else happened? No, thank heavens, no. But everything is just as mixed up as it was last night. It just doesn't seem so bad in the daylight. Oh. And Phil... What is it, Jimmy? I hate to tell you. I suppose I ought to. Of course you should. Everything. Well, the mayor called up the police station in the city this morning. Jimmy. I tried him to to try to get him not to do it, and so did Dr. Tuna. Does does that mean we've got to go to jail? I don't know. I didn't hear what he said on the phone, but... Well, you know how he feels toward me. Well, don't you worry about it. I know you haven't done anything. They can't lock you up. They can't. I know. They can make it awfully hot for us, Phyllis. We did dig in Ernie Morton's grave, and the next morning, Bert Arnold's body was found buried there. How can we possibly prove that we didn't murder Bert? Where are Dr. Tuner and the mayor now? Well, the mayor's gone down into the city of the dead. Dr. Tuner was out in the kitchen just a minute ago. I suppose he stepped outside. Anyway, Jimmy, if if the police do come, we won't have to spend another night in this terrible place. We wouldn't anyway. Oh, I hate Mayor Friday. He's been antagonistic toward us ever since we first came here asking for help. He's got an awful guilty conscience or something. Do you suppose he's been looking for the pearls himself? That would explain why he'd be jealous of us. Dr. Tuner must be in on it, too, then. Oh, no, I'm sure he's not. He's so friendly and gentle. I I don't think he knows anything about what the mayor's been up to. How could he help it? Hasn't he been coming down to the City of the Dead for the last 20 years... To visit his old patients buried here, he says. Yeah, and I reckon that's the truth, too, son. Hey. Oh, Dr. Tuner. How long have you been standing there listening? No, no, Parker. Ain't no use to get all worked up on a nice, sunshiny morning like this. Well, just the same, you had no business eavesdropping. Parker, I reckon you've got a lot to learn. It ain't always the best policy to jump at conclusions. You're young yet. Someday you'll find out diplomacy is a mighty fine trait to cultivate. Well, facts are facts. Yeah, I reckon they are, my boy. Just the same, I venture to say that three-fourths of your trouble here has been of your own making. But what do you mean? I mean you should have done your best to make the mayor like you instead of irritating and badgering him. 
You ain't had any considerations from his feelings right along. So why should he bother to think anything but the worst about you? But I've never accused Mayor Friday of anything that wasn't perfectly apparent on the surface. No, of course you haven't. Neither has he suspected you of anything that didn't look almighty queer. Yeah, but I told the truth. Yeah, I reckon you did. That ain't the point. You've made the mayor dislike you all along. Now, when there comes a time when you want him to trust and believe in you, he naturally turns against you. What time will the police be here? Oh, I don't reckon there'll be anyone down before afternoon. Is he going to turn Phyllis and me over to him? Yeah, the mayor don't do much talking, not even to me. But you don't think we've done anything wrong, do you, Dr. Turner? Well, I calculate I'd rather not say what I believe, Miss Carroll. But say now, I've been standing here lecturing you two when I come in to see you about breakfast. Hot cake batter's all mixed up and the skillet's piping hot. Mmm, hot cakes. Are they the sour milk kind? <laughs> I reckon sour milk hotcakes are the only real hotcake there is. Oh, I adore them. Oh, come on, Jimmy. You are hungry, aren't you? No, I suppose so. Miss Carroll, you're lucky to have a young fellow like Jimmy Parker. He sat by by your bed all the time you were asleep. He just wouldn't move from your side. Oh, Jimmy, you shouldn't have done that. Haven't you had any sleep all night? No, forget it, Phil. I feel fine. Yeah, I'll go out and put on a batch of hotcakes. Oh, by the way, Miss Carroll, do you like your eggs straight up or over easy? Over easy. Oh, isn't he a dear? Mine straight up, Doctor. One straight up, one over easy. I got some mighty fine home-cured bacon for you, too. Jimmy, it was awfully nice of you to sit beside me while I slept. I think that was why my dreams were so sweet. Oh, Phil, dear, you were so lovely sleeping. All the time I sat here beside you, you were smiling in your sleep. I wondered what you were dreaming about. <laughs> Don't you wish you knew? Phil, dear, was it... Listen, Jimmy Parker, you go get me a pan of warm water and a comb and a mirror. You're a fine nurse. I'll bet you'd have let me eat breakfast without even pottering my nose. Yeah, I guess I would. But, Phil... Well, it... Hurry, Jimmy, or Dr. Tuner will be in here with the hotcakes before I'm ready. They're browning nicely. I got a good do on them this morning. Oh, here comes the mayor, Dr. Tuner. I caught a glimpse of him through the window. Well, I'll put a couple of more eggs in the pan, then. Good morning, Mayor Friday. Yeah. Good morning, Miss Carroll. How do you feel? Oh, much better, thank you. Mayor Friday, are you going to turn Jimmy and me over to the police? Oh, now, Miss Carroll. But we only parked Jimmy's car near the City of the Dead. I think if you understood about us... Miss Carroll... I think you and I ought to have a good long talk together. Why, what about? Shh, here comes young Parker. We'll talk about it after breakfast, huh? <laughs> here you are, Phil. Oh, Mayor Friday. Yes, it's me. Here, Phil's a basin of water, soap, wash rag. Thank you, Jimmy. Now, if you'll get me a comb and a hand mirror... It's your thing. I... Comb and a mirror. All right. Here you are. Thanks. And now if you two men will go out in the kitchen with Dr. Tuner so a girl can have a little privacy... Sure, I'll... okay. Come on, Mayor Friday. We'll get together after breakfast, miss. Yeah, pretty good cook, if I do say so myself. Mm, smells good. Yeah, there's a stack of cakes about ready. Oh, hello, Mayor. Ready to eat? You ready as soon as I wash up? I put the table in beside Miss Carroll's bed so we could be sort of sociable. Hey, Doc Tuner, why don't you let me fry the hot cakes? I can jump up from the table and trot out here to the kitchen easier than you. No, I reckon I'm the hot cake expert. Say, Doctor, do you feel a difference this morning? I can't explain it. I feel as though a great weight had been lifted. Well, I reckon I know what you mean, Parker. I, I feel chipper this morning myself. It's as though we had passed through a nightmare and now the danger's over. Hmm. You don't suppose it's because old Clawfoot isn't hanging around any longer, do you? Well, I don't know as I can say that... Oh, uh... Jimmy! Jimmy! Oh, coming, Phil. Well, didn't take you very long. <laughs> it was hard to get the powder on straight when I had to hold the mirror propped up against my knee. Hi, Doctor. Phil's ready. Bring on the bacon and eggs. And oodles of hot cake. Breakfast coming up. Everyone sit down. Uh, Miss Carroll gets her plate in her lap. <laughs> right side up, though, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll sit here by the bed so I can hand things to Phil. No hot cakes for me, Doc. I think too much of my insides. Why, Mayor, they're lovely. Really, they are, Dr. Tuner. Now, don't you feel bad? Oh, Mayor can't hurt my feelings that way, Miss Carroll. I ain't been able to make him eat a hot cake in all the 20 years I've known him. He simply ain't got the taste for them. Oh, they're great, Doctor. I, I was up to Lammy Fink's cabin this morning. That is, what's left of it since it burned down. Lammy Fink? Mayor Friday, just who was Lammy Fink? 
An old feller I had working for me in the city of the dead. Kind of adulated, but he was a good worker. Loved flowers. Well, what about it, Mayor? Why did you go to his cabin? Made the trip for nothing. Everything fell into the cellar when the building burned. Couldn't get to the bottom with all those burned timber, cook stove, and other junk that crashed down into the basement. Couldn't tell how many bodies really was in the place then, huh? No. Oh, listen. The church bell. Well, that's the first time I've heard it ring in the daytime. Very strange. Mighty strange. Heard it a couple of times already this morning. Now, look here. If it keeps up, we should be able to trace it in the daylight. Been thinking about that. Yeah, I think we should go right after breakfast, don't you, Mayor? One of us ought to. Both of you go along. I'll stay with Phyllis. No. But look here, Mayor. Surely you don't think I'd run away and leave Phyllis. You know as well as I do that with that knife wound in her shoulder, I couldn't possibly move her. Gonna keep you under my eye until the police get here. Oh. Well, then suppose you take Parker with you, Mayor, and I'll stay with Miss Carroll. No. Well, Mayor, I'll go look for the bell alone if you say so, but I'll tell you flat, I ain't hankering for it even by daylight. You know how the fog comes up in the middle of the day. Might as well be night when that miserable stuff settles down in the city of the dead. I ain't asking you to go alone. You'll take Parker with you. But look here, Mayor. I promised Phyllis I wouldn't leave her again, and I'm not going to. I... Jimmy, maybe you'd better do what the mayor says. You want me to go and leave you here with this... With... With Mayor Friday? Oh, no. Well, that is... Oh, please, Mayor Friday. Does Jimmy have to go? Yes. Well, I won't. Oh, now, Parker, what was I telling you this morning? I reckon you better come along with me. Dr. Tuner, you don't want me to leave Phyllis with this... this man. Why not? I ain't gonna eat her. Well, if I should leave Phil and... if anything should happen, I'd never forgive myself. Well, I reckon the mayor's just as capable of looking out for Miss Carroll as you or me. Yeah, but look here, if I can't stay with Phyllis, why don't you stay here, Dr. Tuner, and let Mayor Friday take me to look for the Phantom Bell? No, you're gonna do what I say. Well, I... I guess it'll be all right, Jimmy. You go along with Dr. Tuner. Something's wrong. Why do you want to separate Phyllis and me? Oh, now, Parker, nothing's wrong. Look here, young fella. I'm going to tell you something for your own good. The quicker you learn not to suspect the people around you, the better you'll get on in this world. You're keeping something from us. No matter what you think, Parker, you're going out with Doc Tuner, and that's final. Supposing I refuse to go? You haven't got a chance of refusing. You're going with Doc Tuner even if he has to walk behind you with a gun. Oh, please, Jimmy. I'll be all right. Honest, I will. Mm, I don't like it. Well, I reckon you're good. Hello, what in Tunket made that shadow? Where, where's the sun? Going behind a cloud, I suppose. No, it ain't. It's a fog coming in. What, already? Saw it coming from way off when I was up at Lammy Fink's cabin. Well, looks as though we're going to hunt that church bell in the fog. Shouldn't have no trouble if it keeps a ringing the way it has been. Oh, dear. And I was feeling so much better. Uh, more hot cakes, Parker? No, no more. What about you, Phil? No, thank you. Hmm. Mighty skinny appetite. Well, if everybody's finished, let's just carry the table back into the kitchen. Grab a hold there, Mayor. Yeah. As soon as we get the dishes stacked, Parker and I will go on down to the old church. Look here, fellas. If you're afraid to stay here alone with Mayor Friday, you just say the word and I won't go. That gun business is all hooey. Dr. Tuner wouldn't shoot anybody. No, Jimmy. You go ahead. It'll be all right. Really, it will. Only, well, I wish this fog wasn't settling down on us again. It makes me cold inside just to think of it. Listen, Phil. I found this knife out in the kitchen. Jimmy! It's the one you were stabbed with. Oh, take it away. No. No, Phil. Take it under the cover with you. Oh, no. I don't want it. Don't let Doc of the Mayor hear. Please take it. Hide it under the covers. I'll feel a lot better if if I know you've got something to protect yourself with. I I hate the sight of it. It's a terrible weapon. You'd be glad enough to have it if you were fighting for your life. What do you mean? Nothing. Nothing really, Phil. Only... Well, here, take it. All right, but... Oh, yeah, what an ugly handle. Quick, put it under the covers and don't tell anyone. Oh, I... I hate it. There. Now, if anyone gets funny, you can carve your initials on him. Why is old Mayor Friday so intent on having Phyllis to himself? What is it that Jimmy fears for her? And beyond all else... What will Jimmy and Dr. Tuner find in taking up the trail of the Phantom Church Bell? And the missing Captain Friday? But more of all that in just a moment. That ugly knife gives me the shivers. 
I won't rest a bit while it's under the covers with me. Use it if it's necessary. Here's something else. What is it? A whistle. Where did you get that? It's a police whistle Captain Friday left here. Take it. Why, what for? To use if you're in danger. Do you think something's going to happen to me? Not if I can help it. But but with this knife and, and the whistle... I don't want to frighten you, Phyllis. Honest, I don't know of a single thing that might happen. But, well, you know what a time we've had so far. Yes, I know. When you take this whistle, if you get suspicious that things aren't going right, when you become frightened, you just blow this police whistle as hard as you can. You'll be surprised how far it'll carry. Do you think you could hear it anywhere in the city of the dead? I think so. Anyway, we won't be out of range of it very long. That does make me feel safer, to know that I can call you. Shh, watch it. Now, Parker, get your hat and let's get started before the fog settles too thick among the tombstones. All right. I'll be right with you. Now then, Miss Carroll, don't you worry. You aren't in any danger and nothing's going to happen while we're away. You just see if you can't get a lot of sleep today. If everything goes as it should, you'll be up and walking around another day or two. You're sure I'll be all right, Dr. Tudor? Well, of course you will. Well, don't be gone too long, will you? Oh, I don't reckon we'll be out any longer than we can help. Mayor, you're going to take good care of Miss Carroll now, ain't you? Uh, I reckon me and Miss Carroll are going to get on right smart, ain't we, miss? Oh, yes. Yes. Mm. Me and her got a lot of things to talk about. Well, don't get so interested talking. You forget about your job as nurse, Mayor. Well, I'm ready, Dr. Tuner. All right, Parker. Goodbye, Phil. Remember, don't take any chances, will you? No, Jimmy. I promise. Come along, Parker. Come along. Look there, Dr. Tuner. There's Ernie Morton's grave just ahead. Let's look at it a minute. It's getting pretty foggy, Parker. We ought to keep moving. It won't take but a minute. Look here, Doctor. See, this is where Captain Friday and I were lying just before he sneaked over to the grave. You can still see the impression of my body in the grass. Mm-hmm. Looks so all right, son. Of course it's so. If that bell keeps ringing like this, we shouldn't have any trouble following it. Look here at the grave, Doc. Oh, come along, boy. Come along. But I want to prove to you that the grave was open last night. Yeah, how will you do that, Parker? Here. Look at this piece of sod turned upside down. Yeah, what's that prove? Look. The grass is still fresh and green when I turn it over. If that sod had been lying bottom side up since Captain Friday opened the grave three nights ago, the grass would have wilted, wouldn't it? Hmm, I reckon you're right, son. Of course the grave was opened last night. You know what I think? Well, yeah, come along. You can talk as we're moving along. I think that it was Mayor Friday himself digging in that grave. Well, that ain't nothing new. You've been intimating that that's what you thought right along. Well, I never came right out and said it before. Well, there's the old church looming up down there through the fog. We must be getting near the bell. Doesn't sound much closer, though. What sort of woods are those behind the church? Oh, hardwood, mostly. Oak and beech, I reckon. Shall we go on down to the church and make that our starting point? All right, I... Hey, what do you keep cocking your ears back toward the house for, Parker? You can't hear anything down here. Don't know. Thought I might. It's a queer thing to say. What do you expect to hear this far off? Oh, never mind. Well, where are we going to look for this bell? Well, I reckon the best thing we can do is sneak down there alongside of the church and just sit and wait till we hear it. That'll give us a clue to work from. Yeah, but we might sit all day. Hey, there you are now. Listen. Gosh, can't tell anything about it, can you? Don't seem to come from any direction at all. That's a fact. Listen. Seems to be coming from the church, don't you think? Well, it ain't possible. The mayor and I gave the place a good going over, and so did Captain Friday. And the bell ain't in the ruins. Listen. <laughs> Stopped again. Look, Parker, I've sort of had an idea that that bell might be out there in the woods in back of the church. What do you think? Well, maybe. Sounded in the church to me. Well, now, just supposing it was hanging out on a limb of a tree in the woods and was swinging free. Mm-hmm. The wind could blow it or rock the tree, and it'd ring soft-like off and on, just like it had been. But what would a bell be doing up in a tree? Well, there ain't any explaining a good many things down here in the city of the dead these days. Well, why these long waits between the ringing? Sometimes it's been hours. Well, perhaps there hasn't been enough wind to ring it. Well, there's as much breeze now as there was a moment ago when the bell was ringing, and that isn't any. Well, I... There she goes again. Now, listen careful and try to place the direction the sound's coming from. Just the same as before. I'd say the church. It does sound so. But it can't be, I tell you. Still, if it was out in the open, we ought to be able to walk right straight toward where it's ringing. 
Well, are we going to stand here all day or are we going to scout around and see what we can find? Yeah, this damp burn fog would have to come down just now. Danged if I know which way to turn. Look here, Dr. Tuner. Let's go inside the church and listen. Maybe we'll get some clues that way. Well, might as well, I guess. Ain't no good standing around out here getting fog in your ears and throat and down your neck, you pesky stuff. Up in San Francisco, I rather like the fog. This is miserable stuff down here, all right. I've hated it ever since I can remember. Decayed atmosphere, that's what fog is to me. A nice day that's begun to rot. That's a pleasant thought. Mm, can't help it. I always get the grumps and the creeps and the sniffles in the fog. Worst nightmare I ever had was about fog. Well... Here we are. We might as well go in. Good thing I brought a pocket flash along. Go ahead, but mind your way. Them floorboards is rotten as punk. You're likely to break a leg. You want to lead? No, you go on ahead. This is your idea. Here, you can have the flashlight. Well, okay. Ah, this is a miserable hole, isn't it? Everything wet. Mill dude. Shh. Why, the bell's fainter in here than it was outside. I reckon I was right after all. Quick, let's get outside. Now we're getting somewhere. Hey, hey look out where you're going, fella. You'll go through the floor. Come on, Doc. Come on. Parker. Oh. Parker, are you hurt? Parker, are you hurt? Answer me. Parker, you got the flashlight. Turn it on. Parker, answer me. Answer me. Doctor. Dr. Tuner, don't carry on, so I'm all right. All right. All right. Well, then why in Tunket was you making them ghastly groan? That wasn't me, Doc. Wasn't you? No, there's someone else down here. I'm looking for my flash. I dropped it when I went through the floor. You say there's somebody else down there? Hey, Doc, stop asking questions and come and help me. I'm down in the basement. There must be a door to the outside someplace. Basement? Ba By George, that's right. This place has got a basement. Well, go outside and see if you can find a door to it. Blacker and pitch down here, and something's down here with me. The door to the basement's right outside. I I'll be right with you. Oh, what a noise. Oh, blame it all. Where'd I drop that light? Doc ever gets that door. Hi there, Parker. Can you hear me? Yes. What's the matter? Is the door locked? All right, the hinges rusted so bad, I'll have to break the door down. Are you still all right? Yes. Hurry and break it in. I can't find my flashlight. Oh, this groaning is getting on my goat. Well, hang on. I got a piece of timber for a battering ram. Well, go to it, Doc. Oh, this is great. The bell! Hey, Doc, the bell! <laughs> Hurry, Doctor, I discovered something. Dr. Tuner, I found the bell. The phantom church bell's here in the basement. Parker, are you crazy? No, I'm not. Here's my flashlight. There. There's your church bell. Look. Look there in the corner. Yeah. A man bound and gagged. Come on, Doc. Oh, so that's where them groans come from. You know him? No. Never saw him before in my life. Here, help me untie him. Yeah. Yeah. Look here. He ain't only bound and gagged. He's roped to this two before in the wall. Well, they weren't taking any chance on his getting away. Yeah, poor chap. Mighty near dead. He's unconscious, isn't he? What's the matter with him? Well, it looks mostly like starvation, but is it... Bad mump here on his head. We'll have to carry him up to the house. Yeah, and mighty quick, too. He'll die on our hands. His heart ain't showing much signs. Stand aside, Parker. Mm. Yeah. Look here at this old bell, Doctor. Standing here on its rack. Just swings clear of the floor. I can't figure out what made it ring, Parker. I've got it. This man was ringing it. It was the only way he could call for help. Look here, Doctor. See, he was tied to this two-by-four. When he stretched out his bound feet just as far as he could reach... The tip of his toe would just touch the rim of the bell. He'd give it a shove, and the bell would ring a few strokes. Why, criminy, Parker. And then he'd probably have long spells of unconsciousness on account of this crack on the head. That'd account for the spells of silence. <sighs> now then, you ready? There, you take his shoulders and uh, I'll uh, his knees here. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Uh, careful. Uh, he's bump his head on the door, Jan. Yeah, all clear. What'll we do? Leave the bell as it is? Uh, sure, Parker. Ain't nobody gonna touch it. Just strike off through the tombstones and keep on the grass. It's easier walking. Poor guy. Looks more like a corpse than a living man. Yeah, so that was the answer to the phantom bell. No wonder we couldn't locate where the sound was coming from. By the time it got outside the cellar walls, the sound was so broken it seemed to come from everywhere. Funny you or the mayor didn't think of looking in the basement when you came down here three nights ago. Yeah, is it? 
Did you think of looking in the basement for a ringing church bell? Had to fall right in on top of it before you got the idea, didn't you? Just call out if you want to rest. Now, he's not heavy. Well, if we knew as much about old Clawfoot as we do about the bell... The whistle! That's Phyllis! Hey, don't drop the man. It's Phyllis, Doc! Something's happened to Phyllis! Hi, Parker, come back here! Something's happened to Phyllis! Don't you hear the whistle? <laughs> You have just heard the ninth episode of The City of the Dead, written for radio by Carlton E. Morse. Next week brings you Where the Pearls Were Hidden, the tenth and final episode of this adventure thriller. Next week you will know the identity of old Clawfoot, the name of the man who rang the bell, what really became of Grandfather Theodore Beverly, who the murderers were, who the grave looters were, and what became of the famous collection of black pearls. 